ready for Christmas. What the Anglo-Saxons called Yule Month or Yule Month. Come on. Admire like my linguistic ability. Why, it's like Alfred the Great was in the room. Everyone celebrated as they headed to the winter solstice, the end of the long nights and the return of the sun. And who couldn't do with a bit of that at the moment? On Christmas Eve, the old Anglo-Saxons celebrated Mudranith, Night of the Mothers, because back in those days, like any sensible household, women were revered. So to mark this, I've written an almanac in which I do the same, allocating a different fascinating woman from history to each day of the year. So you might think the one date I would have no trouble with is December the 25th. Hmm, history is a quagmire. First of all, the word December comes from the Roman calendar and means the 10th month, which, unless you've been drinking heavily, you'll remember it isn't. So for many in the West, December is all about heading towards Christmas, and it's worth bearing in mind that selecting the 25th of December to mark the birth of Jesus had more to do with convenience than fact. Uh, the Gospel writers, Matthew and Luke, may have noted the circumstances of the Nativity, but neither one of them took the time to refer to a calendar. So I've had a look at what theologians nearer the time of the event thought, and old dudes like Clement of Alexandria placed the occasion on the 18th of November but he also suggested the 20th of May and the 6th or 19th of January. I'm going to suggest he wasn't sure. So it wasn't until more than 300 years after Christ's birthday that everyone settled on the 25th of December. It was an easy date to pick as it was the winter solstice in the Roman calendar and everyone tended to party then anyway. Of course, the date I think we should celebrate in December is the 29th, for it was on this day in 1886 that the dishwasher was patented. Have all the parties you like, but bless the woman who helped us clear up at the end. The dishwasher was invented by a woman called Josephine Cochran. She was born in 1839, and I, for one, will always be grateful. Although, I have to say I'm not sure about some of the background to this. Uh, Cochran was a wealthy woman living in Shelbyville, Illinois. She loved to entertain, but you know how it is with servants. They're not quick enough with the washing up. They break dishes, etc. I mean, I... I've no idea, it's what I'd read. Uh, Cochrane thought she could find a machine that would be more reliable than the staff, but there wasn't one. So necessity, mother invention, all that, she invented it. Next, Cochrane founded a company to manufacture her invention, and the company would grow up to become KitchenAid and made her even wealthier. So presumably she then had more servants and more headaches. Anyway, whatever you're celebrating, may I recommend an ancient piece of technology, the book. It'll keep you company at all hours, it doesn't break down, and you can learn stuff. Uh, Toxvig's Almanac, I don't know how we thought of the title, has at least 365 stories in it of great women whose lives you can dip into. It's a book which will lead you to other books. And the wonderful thing with that is, unlike Netflix, you'll never run out of stuff to amuse and energise you. Do you know, in the literature of the Tamil people of India and Sri Lanka, there was a poet known as Aviyayar, which translates literally as respectable woman. As is often the case with women in early recorded history, we don't know much about her. She may even have been three women over several generations, but certainly there is a record of her writing back in the third century BC. Over thousands of years, her voice still resonates as she reminds us, what you have learned is a mere handful. What you haven't learned is the size of the world. Buy a book for Christmas. I genuinely can't think of anything more exciting.